Fanjo and Hill and Deportago and Von Trips were my heroes in the old days and they all drove this kind of a car, if not this very one. And I wanted to experience what they experienced and I didn't know any other way to do it except by trying to build a car like they had. Since I've seen cars, the 1959 Testarossa was my absolute favorite car. I finally found a body by sheer chance in Italy of a 59 Testarossa made, handmade out of aluminum that was originally intended for uh, the Ferrari factory, but the guy didn't have a chance to sell it. And I uh, had been hanging in this warehouse for 50 years, and I looked at it and I said, I have to do it. I kept going and going and finding all the Ferrari parts I possibly could that were close to the original. It's impossible to get the original parts because there are only five of them and they're worth 35 million each and nobody wants to sell a transmission or a carburetor. I made everything look as close as possible and made the parts to, to look like forgings that they're actually welding, copied the chassis. Uh, I found the right tail lights, the Corello tail lights. Even the headlight rims are identical to the photographs. The instruments I had made copied exactly the instruments. The gas cap is identical, the ignition key is identical, and I tried to do everything as, as closely as possible. There are some things that are different from the original. Uh, it was impossible to find a good uh, three liter motor, so I used a 4.4 365 motor and modified all of the aesthetics to make it look exactly like a 250. And it has 4.4 liters, so it's quite a bit more powerful and a lot of fun to drive. The engine is, is a very complicated engine. It's almost impossible to get the proper parts and I had to put on five head gaskets before I finally found out how to seal it. I worked in Italy for 13 years. I, I love creating and building and, and designing. So one night I had a lot to drink with a friend of mine who was an auto designer named Tom Charda and we decided that we could do better than Ferrari and so we decided to build a car. And it was a two-year process, and we finally showed it at the Torino Auto Show in 1970. The sense of this was supposed to be a good handling and safe car, so it has a very low center of gravity, low polar moment of inertia, and airbags. And it's the first car in the world with factory-installed airbags, I being the factory. The synthesis was actually an entree into a job I was offered a mutual friend, new. Uh, John DeLorean, and he was looking for a director of engineering, suggested I come there. And I went and interviewed him, and he saw the synthesis, which was very close to what he wanted to do because uh, it had airbags and mid engined and uh, looked like a good car. And so he figured if I could build that car, that I could build a DeLorean. Yeah, I drive it as, as much as I can. I drive it down to the local coffee shop. Uh, usually once or twice a week and uh, that's always fun because people don't know what it is and a lot of people stop and look and amazing how many people take pictures of it. It's, uh, it's very exciting, it only weighs 2300 pounds and 400 horsepower with skinny tires. Is It keeps the adrenaline flowing. My family they 
I don't exactly know why, but I think they, they're happy that it keeps me out of bars from chasing women. And, uh, you know, my kids were worried and said, Papa, we don't want you to, to die. And I said, well, I don't think I'm going to die racing. I think it's very safe because of all the precautions that we take. But if that's the way I go, that's all right. These cars are very hard to drive. There's, there's no anti-skid, launch control, electronic, anything. It's pure seat of the pants. One of the reasons that I wanted to build the Testarossa was to experience what my boyhood heroes experienced. And I discovered after driving it and racing it several times that they're not only heroes, they're supermen. To drive at the high speeds for the distances that they did is an absolute miracle. Some people say, yeah, it's not a real Ferrari, it's a fake. And then I say, of course it is, because I can't afford a real one, but I wanted to experience what the old guys experienced, and this is the only way I could afford to do it, and it's my absolute favorite design car that I've ever seen. One guy came up and said it's a fake, and I started talking to him, it turns out he had a real one, 1955, and at the end of our conversation, after I showed him the car, he said he had some parts that he could send me. Then another guy who was a real jerk said, ah, that's just a fake, that's not a real car. And I said, what do you have? And he said, I have a 350. And I said, well, your car is all Fiat parts. Mine's for Ferrari parts. And he didn't like that. In summary, it's the most fun and most rewarding project that I've ever worked on. If somebody offered me a real one in exchange for it, I don't think I'd take it because this is what I want.